shortly we'll be talking with award-winning country singing star Kaylee Bell, who's been touring across Australia with Keith Urban. Now, though, it is coffee group time, and there is no better parenting reward than a Mother's Day breakfast in bed. Go with the head, aren't we? <laughs> but what age should we get kids in the kitchen with us today? Jenny Hale from The Parenting Place and successful mum blogger Claire Deeks. Morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, Claire, let's start with you. How You've got Dom's Kitchen, uh, which is convenient because that's the name of your blog, and Dom, your son, is yeah. in the kitchen <laughs> at the moment doing some work for this. Um, when did you start the blog? A couple of years ago, actually. Yeah, I went from not cooking at all to really getting into it. Yeah, and really teaching them some healthy food ideas. Yes. Yeah. So, Jenny, for those no, I'll do it, mums, and there are a few of those out there, I mean, what are the ages and stages of getting kids to cook? Get them as soon as they're interested. I mean, they might be 18 months old and they're, they're up on a stool and they're watching, they're helping, maybe they're cracking an egg, counting the potatoes. Just use that interest in them as they get older. Uh, more sophisticated tasks and then I think by the age of 10, sometime between 10 and 12, children can be cooking their own a meal for the family or part of the meal for the family. See, I love this concept of cooking a meal for the family, but the actual <laughs> logistics <laughs> of getting it to happen with yeah. three sons is that maybe one will cook every now and again, but the other two, it's very difficult to get, get, to get the ingredients that you need and then you've got to leave them to it to a certain extent. Yeah, you actually have to scaffold it a bit too because when they first start, they'll ask you lots of questions and they make lots of mess and <laughs> stuff like that. So you kind of got to hover and be around and teach them how to do things step by step. Then when they're between 10 and 12, if you've done that or throughout the years, you can actually stand back and let them go. We had a little list inside our pantry door of the things that our kids could cook. So they'd go to that list. And I mean, they had about 10 meals that they could do. That's actually a really good idea. And I guess you can start them late anyway. Um, Claire, why do you think it's important for, you know, for the kids to get in there and create good family values and good meal values? Well, aside from the obvious benefit that you actually get to maybe yeah. have someone do something for <laughs> eventually. you. Eventually. Eventually, yes. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but I think just it's showing that the more involved the children are in either choosing, like shopping, selecting, preparing the food, the more in and likely they are to eat it. Mm. So I think that's a major plus. So they will try new things out. More likely to try it. new things yeah. if they've actually seen a bit more of the process where the food comes from. Dom is obviously incredible keen on the spiralizer. How many vegetables do you get spiralized in your house for the average per day? <laughs> a lot, yes. If I leave him to it, we already had to go to the supermarket on the way here to get some more because he spiralized them all last night. I'll tell you what, those spiralized veggies, that spiralizer, I've got one of those. It's yeah. just the business. It's yeah. so much fun. You can just spiralize absolutely anything. Uh, so Jenny, do kids who establish a healthy relationship with food, I mean, do, do, hang on, let me just rephrase that. Do kids who cook establish a healthier relationship with food? That's pretty much what you've just said, yeah. isn't it, Claire? Definitely. I mean, you are getting their curiosity involved, you're getting them upskilled, they're learning about measuring, there's a lot of educational benefits mm. in cooking but then there's the actual mindfulness that goes with it when they're thinking about the food they are more likely to eat it especially if after you've done all the cooking and preparing you sit down together as a family and eat it. It's knowing that if you sit down at a table and think about what you're eating you're, you're doing better for yourself. And it's a really nice thing to do, but we don't always all have time to do that, but we should try and make time at least once or twice a week. Yeah, or even three times a week. Even three times a week. <laughs> Listen to Jenny with the pressure. Yeah. Um, Claire, just finally, what are some top tips for getting kids into the kitchen? Some easy things yeah. we can do. Yeah, well, I think first of all, is just get them involved in the process, like we said. Maybe visit a market rather than, I know a lot of people horror stories with supermarkets, so a market might be a better idea. Mm. Um, keep it really simple. The Dominic just helps with like the egg cracking, exactly, pancakes, pizza, putting the toppings on the pizza, mm. meatballs, and also make it fun. I definitely, we do um, making fun names for the things and doing spinach and bread, like Shrek bread, stuff like that. Give it a funny name, funny colours, funny shapes. And get them started young. Yeah. Yeah. This is the <laughs> thing we need to do, get them started young. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so let's get them all in the kitchen there so they can cook us some, some dinners. <laughs> Maybe by the time they're 20 <laughs> and end up like our very own Chef Mark too.